Hi, welcome back. In the previous lecture, you learned how to read the state of the button in the simplest possible way. As you can see here, uh, we just use a while true infinite loop and in it, we just take a reading of the button value at pin four and then act accordingly. The problem with this method, of course, is that you've got an infinite loop here that locks the execution of the program in it. It's not a very efficient way to use your hardware. In this lecture, I want to show you an alternative uh, which is more efficient and allows us to read the state of the button using a hardware interrupt. So in this line here, line 58, I have defined an IRQ, an interrupt request on button pin four, and I've configured it in a way that is very efficient. So what I'm saying here is that the trigger is the falling edge of the signal that is produced by the button. So when you press a button, the voltage on GPIO4 falls from high to low, and that is the IOQ falling edge, which is detected and triggers this interrupt. And when this edge, the falling edge is detected, then the interrupt is calling this routine here, a function, the button underscore pressed underscore ISR, interrupt service request or routine is ISR, which branches the program inside this function and again acts accordingly. We'll get to this in a minute. In order to display the LED lighting up, when I press the button, I'm still using a while loop here. It's just the easiest way just to demonstrate uh, the interaction between an ISR and then a different part of your program. And I'm also demonstrating the ability of an ISR and other parts of your program to communicate using global variables in this case. Now let's have a look at some of the details. You can see up here in line 36, I am importing uh, the, the pin function, disable IQ and enable IQ functions from the machine module. And again, the sleep MS from the time module. I'm starting by creating the LED object as usual, and then the button object, which is exactly what we did in the previous example. Same thing here, nothing has changed. Then I'm declaring a couple of variables. This is the button pressed variable. It allows the IQ routine or the ISI as I call it here, routine to communicate with other parts of my program. So when the pr button is pressed, then I update this variable here. As you can see, it is updated here and then used here to determine whether the LED should be turned on or off. I also have uh, an integer, like a numerical variable here that keeps track of how many times I've pressed the button before it's reset. So you can play around with those variables as well. Now inside the definition of the routine that will be called by the IRQ, you can see that it requires one parameter, and this is the object that has caused the IRQ, and this is passed by the IRQ routine here as well. And I'm using this object here to print out some information about what is it that has uh, caused the IAQ. As you can see, I'm taking pin, and exactly as it is, I'm passing it into the button pin global variable, which is then printed out down here. So I can get some information about the object that caused the IAQ. A couple of other interesting things that are happening in here is first that I'm calling the disable IAQ routine, which as you can probably guess, will disable further IAQs. So when I press the button, the first thing that happens is to disable the IAQ. While the ISR function is busy, any further button presses will just be ignored until I re-enable the IAQ right at the bottom of the ISR routine. So when I'm done doing whatever needs to be done to deal with the existing IAQ, then I will re-enable it so that the ESP32 can detect the next button press. A couple of other interesting things here that are perhaps a bit unusual for you is that uh, I'm using the global keyword here. So you can see what's happening. I've got uh, a variable such as button pressed, which I have already declared at the header of my program. So you would expect that this uh, variable would be 
global already just by the fact that it's been declared at the header of the program but in fact it isn't i won't be able to make any changes to this variable from inside this context before i use the global keyword to convert it into a variable that i can make changes to i've got a link for more information about this here if you're curious about how this works if you don't use this keyword then you are going to get a syntax error or you're going to get an error message uh, on line 53 when you try to make a, a change to the value stored in this variable so i'll do the same thing with the other two variables that i'm using across different sections of the program so button pin and press counter you can see that all of those have been declared up there and i still need to use the global variable to be able to make changes to them all right so then i just um, store true into button pressed i store the object that has caused the iq into button pin and then i increment the press counter to one and then i close the iq in here you've got the infinite loop which is similar to the loop function in the arduino it's just constantly going around executing whatever code you have in it and in this case it's constantly checking for the value stored inside the button pressed variable and when it's true it will go inside change it into false turn on the led print out the two messages zero the counter or reset the counter and keep the led on for half a second if it's not true then it will turn off the led and that's about it so I am going to save a copy of this program to MicroPython. It's busy, so let's. I'm going to hit Control C to stop the execution. All right, and then try again. Save a copy to MicroPython. And I'm going to call this button four interrupt.py. All right, I'll close these two and open up, open up that one. I need to open up the interrupt version of the program, this one right here. And now that I've got the program opened on the target MicroPython device, I will play it and press the button and it works. It stays on for half a second as well. Right. Now, one thing to notice here is that in the message that starts with button pressed at, which is right here, you can see that the output of button pin, which is this variable here, which contains the object that has caused the interrupt, it says pin four. And that way, if you have multiple interrupts from different GPIOs, then you can always differentiate as to which button or which interrupt is the one that has triggered your interrupt service routine. Okay, so that's about it with the button example using the hardware interrupt. I want to show you one more variation of the same in the next lecture, which involves this time using a timer interrupt. Let's check it out.